Namaskar. Today I am going to give a talk on promoting Indian languages, art and culture, NEP 2020 and the road ahead. Bharatvars has been known to the world for its most ancient glorious legacy of rich and flowing heritage with a huge repository of literary, artistic and cultural treasure. The accumulated knowledge that sustained the country's civilization through the ages has been manifested in its rich oral traditions, practices, literary texts, science, maths, astronomy, etc., artifacts, heritage sites, monuments, visual and performing art forms, and so on. The evolution of languages, arts, and culture are the civilizational indicators of any country. They are the manifestations of the uniqueness of human beings. And on this glorious land of sages, thinkers, writers, artists, and practitioners, we see how they grew through the ages, where humans created visuals on the walls to the rich oral traditions of the Vedic age to one of the earliest civilizations on earth known as Harappa civilization and then entering the periods of ancient, medieval and modern India. There are numerous languages, artistic and cultural practices in the form of living tradition even today. The beauty and timelessness of Bharatiya culture are evident from the fact that it never became redundant or stagnated. It kept flowing through the ages like a perennial stream since its plasticity has the tremendous capacity of moving forward with novel practices to further enrich and nourish it. In the Indian tradition, language, literature, music, arts, etc. have been accorded appropriate significance in human lives which is so aptly described by Bharathari in Niti Satakam, Saitya Sangeet Kala Bihina Saksat Pasu Puch Bishan Hina. This means that a person devoid of literature, music or art is as good as an animal without tail or horns. Due to continued apathy towards our languages, in modern times and lack of their proper preservation and documentation, many Indian languages, especially those spoken by smaller speech communities and the tribal languages are gradually becoming endangered to die down ultimately. This is because such languages are not used in formal domains such as education, mass media, administration, etc. It is high time that we take required measures for the development and promotion of all Indian languages which include enhancing their visibility, expand the domains of use, preparing standard dictionaries and digitizing existing dictionaries, using modern methodologies, preparation of glossaries, and dictionaries of literary, scientific and technical terms, mother tongue based education, production of material for language teaching in schools, literature production, interlingual translation of literary texts, providing language teachers with pedagogical training, use of mass media for language development, steps to be taken to connect language with employment standardization of orthography, strengthening literary and cultural societies, organizations, institutions and so on. Education is the enabling factor for economic development and language is the enabling factor for access to quality education. The rich heritage of ancient India, uh, Indian knowledge has been a guiding polar star for the national education policy 2020 
while the promotion of arts and culture as well as integration of knowledge of India in all stages of education from the ECCE onwards is what the policy envisages. Multiple initiatives to foster languages, arts and culture in education have been suggested in NEP 2020, including early implementation of the three language formula, promotion of multilingualism, teaching in the home local language wherever possible, conducting more experiential language learning, accurate inclusion of traditional Indian knowledge including tribal and other local knowledge throughout the curriculum across humanities, sciences, arts, crafts and sports whenever relevant and much greater flexibility in the curriculum especially in the secondary school and in higher education. So, so that a student can have the ideal choice of courses to move forward on their own creative, artistic, cultural and academic paths. There is an urgent need for various institutions, especially the language institutions, the NCRT, the SCRTs, the diets, state departments of education etc. to make coordinated efforts and work in synergy in order to implement these measures. As of now, we need to create a congenial environment for the teaching and learning of Indian languages across the country. The stakeholders, students in particular should realize that their future lies in learning Indian languages and learning in and through Indian languages in addition to an improvement in students' employability and employment opportunities. Addressing the issue of mother tongue as one of the vital means to promote literacy, particularly during the foundational and primary years of schooling. The Ministry of Education has launched a mission, Nipun Bharat. It is said that not being rooted in one's own language does not lead to progress. Matri bhasam paritajya ye anya bhasam upasate tatra yanti hite yatra suryo na bhasate. When it comes to the higher education sector, in particular, most of the Indian languages are not offered as a medium of instruction. Also, many languages are not offered even as a subject. A few of the HEIs have already taken the lead to introduce certain courses in Indian languages and others are planning to offer such courses. Higher education institutions should allow students to learn several Indian languages as per their preferences in line with the provision of NEP 2020. Learning of Sanskrit and other classical languages of India also needs to be promoted so that the Indian knowledge system may be integrated into the mainstream scholarship. Knowledge of classical languages is also essential to empower researchers to access primary materials in all domains of knowledge. The languages of Bharat are not mere means of communication, but are the jivan darshan of this land the fountainhead of thought and culture of Indian civilization and have been the vehicle of Indian knowledge system since times immemorial. Apart from the immeasurable treasure of ancient texts in all domains of knowledge, the rich tribal knowledge and practices of the various tribes of India are also intrinsically linked to our tribal languages. HEIs should promote the documentation, preservation and learning of these languages in the best possible manner so that the wealth of knowledge in such languages is not lost and serve as a repository for our future generations. 
the ncrt has taken numerous initiatives in language learning in the spirit of nep 2020 including the development of four national curriculum frameworks and textual material in at least four languages with sanskrit hindi urdu and english we at ncrt have initiated a unique program called bhasha sangam under ek bharat shreshth bharat which includes the development of 100 sentences in the 22 scheduled languages with audio and video embedded with indian sign language the sentences are accompanied by their translation in devanagari script hindi translation in roman script and english for learners and parents to get familiarized with the languages of india and use them we have also undertaken the development of online courses to learn the 22 indian languages which will be available for learners in the year 2023 another pillar of soft power that india possesses is the rich heritage of various art forms artifacts paintings sculptures monuments crafts and performing arts of music dance drama etc that is why there is an emphasis on integration of arts and culture in the school curriculum in nep 2020 it states that there will be a growing demand for humanities and arts as india moves towards becoming a developed country as well as among the three largest economies in the world it endorses that curriculum for school education must include basic arts crafts humanities games sports and fitness languages literature culture and values in addition to science and mathematics to develop all aspects and capabilities of learners and make education more well-rounded useful and fulfilling for the learner awareness of this rich heritage enhances the cognitive and creative abilities of individuals the happiness well-being and cultural identity of individuals are other important reasons that indian arts of all kinds must be offered to students at all levels of education it also help them in understanding the various modes of expression visualization scenario building creative problem solving and divergent critical and reflecting thinking arts in education enhance students ability to understand their cultural heritage as a national treasure and the importance of its conservation and preservation experiencing regional arts and culture from school years onwards provides student with an appropriate platform to nurture creativity and make them citizens rooted in indian culture art integrated education will not only empower the young generation throughout their lifetime but also endow them with a sense of creativity positivism and rootedness in bharat there are several indigenous practices and forms of art in local toys and games folk paintings and sculptures handicrafts textiles music and dance etc regular visits to the museums monuments fairs festivals art galleries performances lecture demonstrations workshops organizing events etc will promote these at all levels in the educational institutions 
the NEP 2020 emphatically states that students should be given the flexibility to choose subjects, particularly at secondary school onwards, including physical education, the art and art crafts and vocational skills, so that they can carry forward their own paths of study in a more fruitful manner. It further suggests that there will be no hard separation among curricular, extracurricular or co-curricular among arts, humanities and sciences or between vocational or academic streams. In line with the provisions of NEP 2020, outstanding local artists and craftspersons should be hired as master trainers to promote local music, art, languages and handicrafts and to ensure that students are deep rooted in the local culture. Every HEI and even every school or school complex should aim to have artists in residence to expose students to art, creativity and the rich treasures of the region and the nation. The NCRT has been working in the areas of art education since its inception. We have developed an effective curriculum and numerous textual and training material in different areas of art education. In the process of developing national curriculum framework, art education is being duly acknowledged by suggesting a road map for its integration into all levels of education. In the Indian tradition, there has always been a lot of emphasis on sanskar or values and the Sanskrit translation of the world culture is Sanskriti. Sanskriti is an outcome of sanskar which we attain in due course of our life. Our youth should have adequate exposure to their cultural heritage, traditions and practices so that an element of appreciation may germinate in the core of their hearts for self recognition. Culture and education go side by side in school education. The aim is clearly articulated as connecting curricular knowledge to life outside which should also be true for all stages and types of education. Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat is an initiative in this direction with the objectives to celebrate unity in the diversity of our nation and strengthen the fabric of traditionally existing emotional bonds between the people of our country and promote the spirit of national integration through a deep and structured engagement between all the states and union territories to showcase the rich heritage and culture, customs and traditions for enabling people to understand and appreciate the diversity that is India, thus fostering a sense of common identity and unity. In every educational institution, the spirit and form of India through the perspective of unity in diversity should be made a part of the curriculum where the unity part reaffirms the conception of India as a united whole and recognizes that the strength of Indian culture lies in its assimilative outlook and synthesizing character. In Bharatiya context, the cultural identity is a source of everlasting unity and rich diversity which is its cultural strength. This concept of unity in India is not a modern one or a new one. It is an inherent one 
and has been existing from the very beginning. Awakening of our rich cultural heritage lost for almost a thousand years is essential to inculcate a sense of self-esteem and pride to be a citizen of Bharata and its civilization. Thus, we see how it is of utmost importance that the youth of today are connected to the glorious culture of our nation through a holistic introduction to the linguistic diversity and rich cultural heritage of Bharata in the curricula. The knowledge of Bharati arts and culture should not be limited to the education of the students, but should become a part and parcel of their lives and vocations. Each one of our youth should become an ambassador of our Indian culture. The teachers of this country have a large role to play by becoming bridge between our rich culture and the future generations. Let us together work in this direction and pave our students path for holistic development of their personalities and transform them into citizens rooted in Bharatiya values. Thank you.